Our next logic gate is called the NAND gate, which is a contraction of NOT AND, or negated AND. This is a special gate because it can be used to create all the other logic gates. As with the other videos on logic gates, we will begin examining its symbol and operation. Next we'll look at its truth table and timing diagram. Then before looking at its Boolean algebra use, we will compare the NAND gate to a gate configuration with an identical truth table, but with a different purpose. We will end on the Boolean algebra use of the NAND. So let's start with the symbol and its function. You should notice that the symbol looks like that of the AND gate. However, the NAND has a bubble on the end, indicating negation. Simply put, the NAND gate takes the output of the AND gate and inverts it. Remember that an AND gate only produces a high output when all the inputs are high. For a NAND gate, this means that any input combination to the gate produces a high output, except when all the inputs are high. So let's jump right to the truth table next. We'll use a two input NAND gate. This means four possible input combinations. We'll also look at the AND gate at the same time. Here are the input combinations. So the first input is 0, 0. A normal AND gate would produce an output of 0. Since the NAND gate inverts this output, 0, 0 produces an output of 1. The next two rows have one high and one low input. On the AND gate, this is a low output. The NAND gate produces a high output. Last, the fourth row has two high inputs. This is the only input combination that produces a high output on the AND gate. This is the only input combination that produces a low output on the NAND gate. Now for the timing diagram. Let's again look at the NAND along with the AND. Looking at just the two output waveforms, I think we get a better sense of how these two gates are inverses of one another. The two waveforms mirror one another perfectly. You should have some practice with this after learning about the AND and OR gates. So let's bring up a new timing diagram and go ahead and determine the truth table for this set of inputs. First, fill out all the table's inputs. Now determine the outputs. And now that we have the truth table, make the resulting output waveform. So that is our output waveform. Let's bring up the output waveform of the AND gate. If you have been following these videos, you may have noticed that I use the exact same input waveforms here. Comparing these two outputs, we again see that they are mirrors of one another. You may be suspecting at this point that the little negation bubble can just switch a value from 1 to 0 or from 0 to 1, and this is true. So if you put that little bubble on an input, it means that an input of 0 is inverted and then applied to the gate. It is with this in mind that we're going to compare the NAND gate to what is known as a negative input OR gate, or simply negative OR. We now know what the truth table of a NAND gate looks like. The truth table of a negative OR is exactly the same. If an input is 0, it becomes inverted to 1. So 0, 0 becomes 1, 1, and then we apply the rules for the OR gate. This means our output is 1. The next two rows of our truth table give us an input of 1 and of 0. To an OR gate, this makes an output of 1. Finally, two inputs of 1 get inverted to 0, and 0 OR 0 is 0. So there we go, two identical truth tables. So the question now becomes, why use one and not the other? The term negative OR is meant to express the fact that the inputs are in an active state when they are low. The NAND gate, like all other gates we have looked at up to this point, have inputs that enter an active state when they are high. So think of it like this, in an active high, the light turns on when a signal is present. However, in an active low, a light turns on when there is no signal present. Here's the difference in the use of these gates 
from the textbook. There are two tanks that are storing a liquid chemical that's needed for a manufacturing process. Each tank has a sensor that detects when the liquid is at 25% full. As long as the tank is over 25% full, the sensor output is high at a level of 5 volts. Once it drops below 25%, the sensor goes low and produces 0 volts. Now the plan is to implement a green LED to indicate when the tanks are both above 25% full and a red LED to indicate when one of the tanks falls below 25%. So for the green LED, we'll need the NAND gate. Using this gate, we have the following logic. If tank A and tank B are above one quarter full, the LED is on. When one or both of the tanks falls below 25%, the logic switches to a high-low or low-low situation, which we have seen causes a high output. So why does the green LED operate if the output is low? Well, remember that the bubble on the output means that the gate operates with an active low output. If the output is low, then the circuit is active. So the LED operates as long as the output of the NAND gate is low. Now for the red LED, we will need the negative OR gate. So as long as both tanks are above 25% full, the high output of the sensors is negated and inverted to lows before being ORed. Therefore, the output is low and the red LED is off. When one or both of the tanks fall below 25%, the sensor goes low, which is inverted by the negative OR into a high signal to be ORed. This will cause a high output on the gate and cause the red LED to turn on. So hopefully you can see the difference in the usage of the two gates despite them having identical truth tables. As I talked about before, that little bubble on the NAND output and on the negative ORS inputs is simply an inverter. When it comes to Boolean algebra, an inversion is represented by placing a bar over what will be inverted. This is the same bar used for the inverter, or NOT gate. Since the NAND is the inversion of an AND gate, we use Boolean multiplication and place the bar over the expression. So here's what I mean. A NAND gate has inputs A and B and has an output X. We have A times B for our Boolean expression, and now to negate this, we place a bar over the entire expression like this. Since we have talked about it already, let's create a Boolean expression for a negative OR gate. The inputs A and B are ORed, so we use the addition symbol. The inputs themselves are negated, so that is what we place the bar over. One bar for each input. So notice the difference in the NAND expression. In the NAND expression, the bar extends over the entire expression, multiplication symbol and all. However, the negative OR does not cover the addition symbol. If we had started with just the Boolean expression, this would tell us how and where to place the bubble on the gate. If the bar covers the entire expression, then it goes on the output. If it only covers a single letter, then we place the bubble on that input. That will wrap up this lesson on the NAND gate. Now I didn't go into the same amount of detail as in the AND and OR gate because I assume you've already watched those videos. So if you started with this video and haven't watched the previous videos of sections 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3, it might be a good idea to do so. The links are in the description. Until next time!